Memphis gone final 27-24. The Falcons edging out the Bears there in the fourth quarter. More good stuff out of Justin Fields, but not equaling a W, and that's been the story for the Bears, who, if there's a silver lining, well, it's the draft pick. Uh, Panthers and Ravens, that one with about four minutes left is the Ravens 13-3. It was 3-3 for the majority of that ball game, but the Ravens coming to life here in the fourth quarter. The Bills pushing their food around in the first half, but they have this one well in hand with about three and change to play, 28-16. Bills and Browns in Detroit, let's not forget. Also, Texans and Commanders, they've gone final uh, as the Taylor Heineke era is officially underway. And it is underway with a win with the team committing to Heineke for the rest of the season. Eagles and Colts have just come to a close as well with the Eagles getting back on the winning track. Trailed for the majority of this one, but 17-16 is the final score despite giving it away uncharacteristically for a second consecutive week. Pats and the Jets, it's never not interesting as the Patriots look to make it 14 in a row against the Jets, but we are still knotted at three with about 90 seconds to play. Uh, the Rams and the Saints, that was a game that happened, and that's all you need to know. 27-20, to 20, Matthew Stafford did enter the concussion protocol in that one. And it's the Giants getting handed a loss by the Lions, or close to it at least, with four minutes to play and a couple scores between them. All right, Rick Spielman, Tyler Sullivan in the mix here to break down some of what we did see. And let's begin with the Eagles who just about 10 days ago were this unstoppable force and an immovable object, guys. But here they look human once again, although it does come in a win. Rick, I'll go your way first here. It is a W, and when you're in that situation, do you essentially wipe clean what we just saw and say, hey, 9-1, and one, let's move forward? Or are there things that do need to be addressed here immediately? Yeah, no, I think that they're, they're playing well. Uh, today, the one thing that I did notice and I wanted to see when they were down and behind – Jalen Hurts, was he good enough to bring them back on the road against an Indianap an inspired, I should say, Indianapolis Colts team and what a job Jeff Saturday's doing. But I don't, they've always been, when they were going undefeated, uh, they were always leading or controlling the game. This is the first time that I've seen Jalen Hurts actually on the road in a tough circumstance come back and lead that team to a victory. Yeah, I'll echo what Rick said just there. It is credit to J Jalen Hurts to be able to will his team back on a game where they really had no business of winning against the Indianapolis Colts. As crazy as we may say, they had no business winning against the Jeff Saturday-led Colts. But that's exactly where they were. Three points going into the fourth quarter, really uninspired football. To me, the biggest issue for this team over the last few weeks, and that includes the loss against Washington, but you can even go back to that Thursday game against the Houston Texans. They seem to be playing down to their competition. They get kind of beat up a little bit in terms of running the foot or stopping the run. You saw it with Jonathan Taylor a little bit today. You've seen it over the last few weeks, whether it's Brian Robinson or you can go all the way back to Damian Pierce. They are getting moved around a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. They need Jordan Davis back on that defensive front. He's somebody that is going to be critical for them in the postseason when he gets back healthy. But like you said, credit to Jalen Hurts for able to get that 14 points in the fourth quarter, score that go-ahead touchdown. To me, that's encouraging when you see the development, the continued development of Hurts. But to me, the bigger picture question about this Philadelphia team is are they able to extend? Are they able to use what their talent ceiling is and go and beat up against these bad teams? So mm -hmm. far the last few weeks, they kind of play down to that competition. A win is a win, and they are 9-1 and one on the season, which is nothing to scoff at here, Tyler. But you mentioned it there. The way you win against lesser teams might tell you something about the road ahead. So with that in mind, what is the message from Nick Sirian as he, as he tries to get his team to play back to that ceiling that they've already established being a very high one? Yeah, no, it's just getting back to a better rhythm to start these games. I mean, we, we've talked about it a bunch. This team was unbelievable in terms of scoring, particularly in the second quarter. But it did take them a little bit longer to kind of get started, even in those games. And it just feels like whatever that magic was in that second quarter, it's kind of fizzled out a little bit. And again... To me, it's stopping the run on the defensive side of the ball, giving your offense as many at-bats as possible to get down the field and get into the end zone. But for me, it's just getting back to their roots, obviously running the football, getting everybody healthy. And that's one thing that's a big thing with this offense. This is their first game without Dallas Goddard, who has become a huge piece to this passing attack for Jalen Hurts. They're still figuring themselves out as to what they are at this point. Obviously, A.J. Brown was banged up last week, too. I don't know if he's 100% for this game either. So for me... That's the biggest thing. Get healthy and ultimately try to find that rhythm earlier in games so you can get off to faster starts. 
Yeah, and just to follow up with that, they went out and signed Linville Joseph. They went out and signed Adonim Kinsu mm -hmm. uh, to try to shore up that defense until Davis comes back. But when Philadelphia is the deadliest is when they can get that big lead and then let them pass rushers go after the opposing quarterback and then game over. But they have to solidify the run defense. They tried to do that with the two signings this week to hopefully put a little band-aid over that defensive front uh, versus the run until they can get the Jordan Davis back. All right, we got plenty of other action to bring your way here as they're coming fast and furious. We'll have all the highlights here throughout the hour as we take a look at the fantasy performers here out of this uh, less than stellar Eagles performance, but 9-1 and one is 9-1. and one. Jalen Hurts held under 200 yards through the air, did have one touchdown, uh, rushed it for another 86. And it's interesting, if you look at some of those dominant performances, Hurts is turning into more of a pocket type, and the rushing yards had waned, and here's some struggles as he does amass near 100 on the ground. Matt Ryan and Jeff Saturday's Colts just not doing enough, getting edged out by one point here as Jonathan Taylor leaves plenty on the table for fantasy managers as well. Let's get you up to speed with your HQ headlines, beginning in the college ranks, where after defeating UCLA 48-45, to USC moved up to the number five spot in the latest AP poll. It's the first top five ranking for the Trojans since 2017. The top four did remain unchanged with Georgia receiving 62 of the 63 first place votes. Tennessee, after getting blown out by South Carolina, dropped from fifth all the way down to ninth. Elsewhere, the World Cup opened on Sunday with Ecuador defeating Qatar 2-0 behind two first half goals for Enter Valencia. It's the first time in the 92 year history of the tournament that the host nation lost its opening game. Valencia struck first on a penalty kick and put the match away in the 31st with a header. In the association, Kyrie Irving has been cleared to make his return tonight for the Nets against the Grizzlies. This comes according to Yahoo Sports. He's completed each required step to end his team and post suspension for promoting an anti-Semitic film on social media. Kyrie spoke to the media earlier today, apologizing again and reiterating that he is not anti-Semitic. And in the NFL, free agent Odell Beckham Jr. plans to visit the Giants and the Cowboys after Thanksgiving. This comes according to NFL Network. The Giants drafted Beckham back in 2014. He spent the first five years of his career in New York, while the Cowboys and owner Jerry Jones have made it clear that they'd like to have OBJ in Dallas. Beckham is in the final stages of his recovery after tearing his ACL in last year's Super Bowl. And with that, we say hello and welcome to CBS Sports HQ. Another jam-packed Sunday coming your way, and it's the NFL. So everything you thought you knew, forget it. Let's take a look at some of the scores here as the 